Google Cloud runs on the same infrastructure that Google uses for its end user products like Google Search and YouTube. Within cloud, there's a broad range of services for compute, data, analytics, and machine learning that you can leverage to bring the same underlying technologies that Google uses to power your games. Google Cloud is a popular choice for game developers. It offers global scalability so that developers can easily handle the large amounts of data and traffic that live games generate today. This comes with little additional effort on the developer's end to reach players across the planet. In this video, we'll demonstrate that reach by highlighting the core services of Google Cloud and touch on the supporting services that help enable an ecosystem for live games. Hello, my name is Michael Bykowski, and I'm an application modernization specialist for games at Google Cloud. There's a lot that goes into making a live game. Today, there is just as much work, maybe even more, that goes into growing a game post-launch that went into building the game. Live games not only require a well-made game that is both reliable and scales at launch, but analytics must be incorporated to make the necessary decisions to drive community engagement and player interest. To grow our game after launch, we must continue to operate, analyze, and update our game and live services well after launch. To accomplish this, some game studios host community events, add new desired game features, and are always finely tuning game mechanics. This must be done with agility and scale. Being able to work in an integrated ecosystem helps limit the cognitive burden and operational overhead to scale your game with ease. Inside our ecosystem, we have the backbone, the trifecta of services for compute, data, and analytics. For running our live games and dedicated game servers, we have GKE Autopilot, a mode of operation that extends best-in-class Kubernetes on GKE and streamlines configurations of your clusters following best practices for scaling and optimizing container workloads, so you don't have to worry about provisioning this for sizing nodes to run the most optimized clusters. For storing your game and player data, we have Cloud Spanner, a globally replicated, highly available, and externally consistent ACID compliant database. Did I miss anything? Spanner does all the heavy lifting for you, scaling to millions of nodes and performing millions of in-game requests per second, so you can handle your biggest events or launches with ease. And for analyzing the player experience and in-game data, we have BigQuery. With 11 nines of durability and petabyte scale, BigQuery is a data warehouse solution that can form simple SQL queries has built-in machine learning, and can connect to multiple data sources, even across other clouds, allowing you to consolidate all your game data, wherever it might be, into a single analytics powerhouse. Some of the biggest game companies are built on this backbone. For example, Niantic leverages thousands of GKE clusters to operate Pokemon Go and their supporting microservices across the globe to support millions of players at any given moment. Square Enix is dynamically able to scale their in-game data with Spanner as the influx of players join during launch. And King needs to be able to reliably handle hundreds of thousands of concurrent connections at any moment to support their analytics. Google's BigQuery is a data warehouse solution that they found to have the capability to support their needs. Google Cloud has a lot of support characters to prop up our tanks. GKE Autopilot, Spanner, BigQuery, these supports will enable us to operate from anywhere and deploy to everywhere. Just a few of these live services that will help us level up include Anthos, a platform to help manage your Kubernetes configurations and applications across clouds or even on-premise. Looker, a BI tool that integrates seamlessly with Google Cloud's data offering, like BigQuery. PubSub, a scalable messaging service to decouple and consolidate your data needs and a multitude of developer and operative tools like Cloud Code, Cloud Build, and Cloud Deploy. We'll take a look at these later in our demo. Back to our tanks like GK and Cloud Spanner, we can operate across continents with a few lines of code and deploy through a single pipeline so that the players can have the best, most immediate experience. And BigQuery can operate in any region that makes sense for your data needs and for a single view of the player. It's time to launch. <laughs> Let's see our cast of characters working in orchestration together. The player interacts directly with our dedicated game servers and live services powered by GKE Autopilot. Our containerized live game services, such as matchmaking, content moderation, and our leaderboard service, run inside a separate cluster from our dedicated game servers, orchestrated by Agones. Cloud Spanner persists the player and game data. This may include player profile, inventories, or global game data accessible from no matter where you are in the world. Finally, we can co-locate all of our player and game data to BigQuery, where we can perform near real-time analytics and predictive analytics with BigQuery ML. 
This is all in service of analyzing the player experience and better engaging with the player community. Let's see some of this in action. It's time to release our hotly anticipated game, if this year was 1972. Space, Space Aeon. Aeon. For this demo, we will have support and tanks standing side by side as we walk through a soft launch. We will need to replicate production-ready environments to new regions for more optimal player experience. We'll then role-play taking in player feedback and implement a maybe slightly overlooked, but very much needed, global leaderboard service and push it to all the online regions. We'll finish with some simple analytics and BigQuery from our game. Let's get started. For this demo, we will use a game originally developed by GitHub username Laramir, created originally to demonstrate Agones and OpenMapped working together. In our example, we will use it to demonstrate some of the supporting concepts we touched on earlier that elevate our use of the big three, GKE, Cloud Spanner, and BigQuery. A quick note, um, I, what I will be working through covers a lot of breadth, as we will be able to see what it looks like to work in an ecosystem for gaming on Google Cloud. Space Aegon is a simple asteroid shooter S game that allows you to find a match with the first person who is also in queue to find a match. So I'll go ahead and roll that. Um, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and click find a game. And I'm actually on my phone going to also find a game so I can go ahead and match with myself. Uh, and there we go. I'm connected, and now we're playing the game. As you can see, pretty pretty simple. I'm a spaceship here um, shooting some pixels at the other spaceship. Let's go ahead what looks like what this looks like in the cluster. Um, we are using Agones and OpenMatch. So OpenMatch goes ahead and allocates a game server for us. Um, and we should go ahead and see that here. So we'll go ahead and get those game servers. And we do see indeed that our dedicated game server is allocated. And Agones has already been nice enough to provision a new hot standby one. So we always have a, a nice buffer in case we have a spike in traffic all of a sudden. That covers the introduction to the game. Now let's move on to the cloud side. We'll start our little walkthrough scenario off with this. We already soft launched in the Asia region for testing out some gameplay with players. Here we have a full setup on GKE that lets us play the game. We'll be wanting to launch this in a new region for this demo for the best player experience. To deploy our infrastructure, we will be leveraging Google Cloud Config Connector. This is an open source Kubernetes add-on that allows us to manage Google Cloud resources through Kubernetes. One cool thing about this is it allows organizations to simplify the management of those different platform pieces using one configuration language and one reconciliation engine to manage all our infrastructure and configuration with Kubernetes style YAML that we all know and love. And since the Kubernetes resource model, KRM, is part of open API spec, we can build tooling and abstractions around Config Connector to simplify for our developers in the organization that best meets their needs. To make this easy on ourselves, we will use a managed service. This service, Anthos Config Management, helps us reconcile those cloud configurations from Config Connector and sync with Git a Git repository so we can have a true GitOps approach to manage our infrastructure and configuration as data. One thing that I won't really show in this demo, but I want to mention is that ACM also comes with policy controller based on open source project Gatekeeper as a way to put guardrails in place and compliance policies on your clusters to have that peace of mind from an administrative perspective that everything going onto your cluster is non-disruptive. Let's take a look at our GitOps repository where we'll host our config connector resources to deploy Google Cloud infrastructure and other configurations. I'll be using Customize to simplify our declarative manifests. And to be honest, a lot of this is just about organizing. And sometimes we'll match a game studios or publishers' business functions or development environments like dev, staging, prod. In my case, I'm separating things by cloud resources, what gets deployed on Google Cloud, and by Kubernetes resources, what gets deployed in each of our GKE clusters across a fleet where you see Agones and OpenMatch there and underneath configs. On the cloud resources, I have a host project that might be managed, for example, by platform administrators and a tenant project where those said platform administrators might provision the necessary resources to get a game studio up and running. Or in our case, the new game launched in different regions. Let's go through the resources that are applicable to our tenant project that will be in charge of releasing the game to new regions. We start at a high level with customize, pointing to our main resource directories. Here we have a few things, those directories like IAM resources, our GKE clusters, fleet, um, here with a capital F, which is allow, allows us to logically manage and have sameness across multiple clusters, and spanner that we will touch on later. Let's ready our release to Europe and North America. To do this, I um, go ahead and uncomment some prepared YAML, but essentially what I'm doing is enabling a few things, including two new GKE clusters. 
just take a peek at some of these YAML files. This one is declaring the actual cluster in US West 1 region and can see it structured very much like any other Kubernetes resource. We also have the node pool declaration with E2 standard four machine types and a few things for handling fleet, sometimes called hub services as you see in the name, where you can see how, how we specify the Git repository that we are actually syncing to. Let's go check out what this is doing on the console. We can go to the config sync dashboard underneath Kubernetes engine and see what is happening. Our, our sync status is in a pending state, meaning that the latest observed state from the source, Git, has been changed and will attempt to get us to a sync state between the Git repo and our ACM cluster. We see the state is synced, and now we are just waiting for the realized state to be reconciled by the controllers of ACM. Taking a look under the repo sync tab, we will see those new resources we declared and committed to our repository. Specifically, we see those new clusters in US West 1 and Europe West 1, along with their node pools and other configs. Let's go ahead and speed up this process. OK, while these resources are still progressing, we can go ahead and see what is actually happening on the GKE console. A reminder, so far we have spent most of our time in our host project, that InfraCore project. Now we are in the tenant project, dash GKE. We will now see these resources being provisioned in those tenant projects. Let me go ahead and click refresh. And there we see our new two clusters being readied. Looks like we have successfully enabled two new clusters in Europe and North America with Config Connector. A reminder, not only are we syncing our cloud resources, but also syncing any configuration manifests that are required to run in our game in each region. In this case, Agone is an open match and a few game-specific services. This is all being powered by Fleet and Hub, so we have some sort of sameness across our clusters. Similarly, we can check out a similar type of dashboard and config sync in our tenant project. But in this project, we are more interested in what lives inside our GKE clusters and not the cloud resources themselves. If I go ahead and expand one of these, we'll see um, some of those resources in action and already in a sync state and just being reconciled. We have the open match, uh, some Agones resources, and a few other things. And we'll see that across both the GKE Europe West cluster and our other clusters. So we have a same state all backed by Git. The beauty of this is we have separation of concern by persona and by projects, all while maintaining a consistent configuration language between the two all sync nicely with Git, so we can have a continuous dev cycle between our operators and our developers. Everything is synced in our new regions, and we are now delivering our game across two new continents. At this point, I'd say people are pretty thrilled with the game. Critics are raving on its retro-style gameplay that takes them back. But there are some complaints. For one, people are especially upset that it didn't come with the leaderboard. Let's go ahead and get that rolled out quickly, since our developers have been hard at work on it already. Back in our configuration repo, for this leaderboard, we will need a database that can reach all across the globe, nearest as possible to the players for the most optimal experience. And we would like consistency of scores to show up for everyone. Let's go ahead and launch that Spanner instance and backing leaderboard database in the same way we launched GKE with Git. For Spanner, we describe an instance and a database. A table can be created just like SQL. And for the Spanner instance, we can configure that to be in three continents for planet scale. The processing units here are also specified here. We don't need much. Um, 1,000 processing units is equal to one node. And just like before, I'll, do, I'll go ahead and add this, commit it, and push it up to our repository. And I, I'm just pushing it to the main branch, but of course, uh, the game studio might have a Git strategy of their own, example being pull requests or merge requests. And if we ha hop back over to our host project, we'll see a very similar pattern that we saw when we deployed GKE. In this case, we see the new Spanner instance and Spanner database um, pending and eventually will be reconciled by the controllers. Now we'll go to our tenant project and look at the Cloud Spanner instance. We see it, was, we see it has been deployed through Config Controller and we see exactly what we specified. We have the configuration across three continents, North America, Europe, and Asia. And we'll even look at our table schema and see it's exactly as we declared in a very familiar SQL language. Now let's hop over to the code for our leaderboard service. We have a pretty simple Go application here. 
I define an events endpoint, leader endpoint, and a health endpoint. For these endpoints, we have two controllers. One is just the get events, so we'll be getting every event. And you can see that we can use pretty simple SQL queries connected to our Spanner database. For our leaderboard function, we use a similar SQL query, but this is the case we use descending order on the spawn missile event for our leaderboard. So it really just comes down to who can hit the spacebar the fastest. Let's go ahead and integrate this with the front end. So we'll go ahead and do a, we'll go ahead and fetch our data with the get request. We'll actually have to render those elements on the, on the page. So we have them in descending order. And we'll define our fetch leaderboard function that will be triggered on click. And we'll have to enable this button on the HTML page inside of our new leaderboard button. Before I deploy this to dev, I wanted to point out the IDE I'm working in real quick. This isn't any run-of-the-mill VS Code instance. This VS Code instance runs in cloud workstations is actually running the same virtual private cloud that I have my dev infrastructure. And it doesn't have to be just VS Code. It can be IntelliJ also. It's also custom tailored and pre-packaged with all my favorite extensions and themes so that it can code from any machine that has access to the internet. One interesting package I wanted to point out is cloud code. A cool thing here is it integrates nicely with GKE through the kubeconfig file. This is great for when you are developing with a ton of different microservices for your live games, and you need a way to easily develop, build, and test with less friction. What Cloud Code actually is, is an integration with Scaffold and Google Cloud to provide this continuous dev loop cycle. Inside Scaffold, we have the defined services and their images that we would like to work with in our IDE. We can also call out here how we would like to build our images, test them, or deploy them and we get a, as granular as necessary per service if needed. And let's go ahead and add our leaderboard service to the scaffold config and execute our development session in cloud code. We'll see it run through a build process, render the manifests, which might be done in Helm or customize, and then finally deploy to our dev cluster. While this is building, I just want to quickly point out what scaffold is and point out some documentation. Scaffold is an open source project by Google. How you define a scaffold pipeline, you can declare build, deploy, render, and test stages. Most of Scaffold supports pretty common open source tools in the Kubernetes ecosystem like Docker, Helm, Kept, and Customize. One thing I wanted to point out real quick in Cloud Code is that once we have all our services deployed, we have the events and logs streaming in our console from every service. Let's go ahead and see this leaderboard in action in our dev cluster. So I'll go ahead and refresh. And now we see our new leaderboard function. I'll go ahead and click that. And it looks like we already have some pre-populated scores. Let's go ahead and go and find a game again. And we'll add some more events to our leaderboard. So I'll spawn a couple events here. And we'll jump back to our leaderboard to see it populated with more data. So this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and roll out this deployment pipeline so we can deploy to our two new regions in North America and Europe. For that, we'll be using Cloud Deploy. And we'll specify a delivery pipeline, which has three targets, in this case, Asia region, Europe region, and North America. Those are all pointing to those GKE clusters. We can also declare profiles here that might point to different configurations based on the need of those regions. But this could also be for different environments if you have a dev setup, a test setup, or a prod setup. So I'll go ahead and run a gcloud command to provision this pipeline. We'll also want to trigger this pipeline in an automated way. So anytime we make a commit to, in this example, the main branch, we'll go ahead and do a build and we'll go ahead and do a release to that deployment pipeline. In a more productionized environment, you might have some unit tests and some integration tests before you do those promotions. In the cloud deploy pipeline in our tenant project, the dash DKE project, we can visually see the pipeline here. We'll see we have our declared delivery pipeline that deploys to our dev region, Asia, then onto Europe, and then we have a review stage before we wanna go full on into North America. And we can quickly look at the trigger event in Cloud Build that kicks this off. 
So let's go ahead and get add and get commit our changes to the leaderboard code, and we'll kick off our deployment to those new regions. Our build is just about complete, and we'll go ahead and see that release to the delivery pipeline. So over to our Cloud Deploy console, we we'll already see that we we're kicking off a deployment to our APAC region. And before we go ahead and promote this to uh, the Europe region, I wanted to quickly show a cool feature here, which we can actually see the difference in the cluster environment where we're deploying to. So we'll see what existed before, and we'll see what the proposed release is. Let's go ahead and promote. And this is something that can be automated in Cloud Build as well, if we want to go ahead and automate that promotion step based off of some integration tests. Before I go ahead and promote that to our final North America region, I can give it a review. At this point, we covered quite a few things. We saw creating our infrastructure and GKE configs with Config Connector. We used Anthos Config Management as our GitOps controller. This allowed us to quickly bootstrap and have sameness across a fleet of clusters using a familiar tool to most developers, Git. We stood up Spanner in a similar way for supporting our leaderboards across three continents so that we can give the player the best experience with practically unlimited scale. We quickly demonstrated a continuous dev cycle with cloud code and scaffold, which helped shift our game development left. So we know that our code is being built and can be tested early in the dev stage. And we just finished a quick CI CD pipeline for deploying our new leaderboard service to our target regions. The final thing we will capture is the analytics piece. So we know we are making the most of our captured data in Spanner and anywhere else for our game-driven development. To demonstrate that, I'll have to go ahead and connect an external connection to BigQuery. This is your first time, you'll have to enable the API. And we'll go ahead and make the connection type, which in this case is Cloud Spanner. But you can see that we have other things like Cloud SQL and even things off Google Cloud. We'll go ahead and name this connection ID, space Aegon Spanner, and go ahead and put in the database name that targets our space Aegon DB demo. Now we're ready to go to do some analytics. I can go ahead and run some simple SQL query here. And we can see that I'm connecting to my Spanner database and selecting all of our game events. A cool thing is here is we're not just limited to Cloud Spanner. If we had other connections in place or just other data sets within BigQuery, we can also combine those to really enrich our data and player insight. Finally, we see the results of the query and we can see that we're getting all the event types and not just those that were related to the leaderboard, which was spawn missile. We see other things like spawning the ship and destroying the, and the destroy event. And there you have it. We just practically walked through what might be our first full life cycle for our game. And now we have data in place to start driving our decisions and game features and possibly events in the future. I hope this video helped illustrate what it is like to operate inside an ecosystem for live games on Google Cloud. And I encourage you to dive deeper in any of these topics that might be of interest to you and your gaming team. Thank you.